Okay, now we're going to look at some verses in the New Testament. We're going to start at Matthew chapter 9, verse 13, where we read in the King James Version, But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice, for I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Okay? That's what the purpose of Jesus Christ dying on the cross was for. It was to bring sinners to repentance. But look at the NIV. But go and learn what this means. I would desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Period. Sinners to what? Why would they take out sinners to repentance? I find that kind of interesting. Was Is repentance to repentance? Is that archaic? Matthew chapter 25, verse 13. King James Version says, Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Okay? Speaking about the second coming, the second advent of Jesus Christ. NIV, therefore keep watch because you do not know the day or the hour. Uh, I know the day and the hour today. It's uh, October the 13th, I believe, and it's about 1137. I know the day or the hour. Why would they take out the coming of the Son of Man? Okay? Mark 2.17, When Jesus heard it, he saith unto them, They that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Now the NIV took it out there in Matthew, but they wouldn't do it again in Mark, would they? I mean, that would just be obviously very crooked of them. Well, let's see. On hearing this, Jesus said to them, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Yeah, they took out to repentance again because it's crooked. It's a satanic Bible. Mark chapter 3, verse 29. See what it says here? But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. Okay? You blaspheme the Holy Ghost, you will go to hell forever. What's the NIV say? But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. He is guilty of an eternal sin. But what about damnation? Well, the fact of the matter is the NIV has completely removed the word damnation from the Bible. It doesn't appear in the NIV. Uh, Luke chapter 4, verse 8. Let's look at this one. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Amen. What's the NIV say? Jesus answered, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve Him only. Where's the get thee behind me, Satan? Why would they take that out? Interesting. Luke chapter 9, verse 56. Here we have, For the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. Notice the words in red there. Very important, not archaic. What does the NIV do? Verse 56, And they went to another village. Why would they take out, for the Son of Man has not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them? Why would the NIV do that, if it's a better Bible and reads the same as the King James Version? Yeah. Romans chapter 13, verse 8. Let's look at this. O no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. But let's look at our modern NIV and see what it has to say. Let no debt remain outstanding. <laughs> Um, no, the King James says, owe no man anything. The NIV is saying, you know, you shouldn't, you just don't let your debts remain outstanding. In other words, you can owe men, but just, you know, try to pay it off. Make your monthly payments. Romans chapter 13, verse 9, we have the Ten Commandments listed for Christians. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. That means don't lie. Thou shalt not covet, and if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Notice that thou shalt not bear false witness. Look, it's, look at the lying NIV. The commandments, do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not covet. Uh, where's the thou shalt not bear false witness? Where's the command, do not lie? Why would they take that out? 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2. We'll look at this one. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Okay? The Bible teaches that men are the ones to be preaching, not women. But look at the NIV. Now it is required that those who have been given a trust must prove faithful. Uh, they took out a man. Isn't that interesting? 
So you could have a female preacher there. 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 10, verse 24. Let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. In other words, you should try and help other people. You should, your main goal should not be to get rich. But let's look at the NIV. Nobody should seek his own good, but the good of others. So the King James Version warn, or talks about wealth, seeking other people's wealth, trying to make other people uh, succeed in life. But the NIV removes that and says good. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 38. The King James Version says, But if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant, like the translators of the NIV. But what does the NIV say? If he ignores this, he himself will be ignored. <laughs> okay, totally different thing. It does not say the same as the King James Version. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 14. King James Version. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. If you are washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, your sins are paid for. You are perfect in the sight of God. Because by one sacrifice he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. You see the little Roman Catholicism entering in there? By works you are being made holy. You aren't sanctified. You are being made holy. Revelation chapter 8 verse 13. This is a good one too. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other vo voices of the trumpet of the three angels, which are yet to sound. The King James Version says an angel. Look at, look at the NIV here, though. As I watched, I heard an eagle that was flying in midair call out in a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because of the trumpet blasts about to be sounded by the other three angels. <laughs> so the King James Version has angel. The NIV has a talking eagle. Boy, that sure is a much better reading than that old archaic King James Version, isn't it? Yeah, fairy tale is what that is. Revelation 13, verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. I stood. Who wrote the book of Revelation? John did. Look at the NIV. And the dragon stood on the shore of the sea. <laughs> uh, okay. So you have, in the King James Version, John standing on the, sea, on the shore, and the NIV is the dragon. You have Satan. Pretty amazing. Revelation chapter 21, verse 24. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. The nations of them which are saved. Okay? But again, the NIV doesn't like things like that. And uh, what do they say? The nations will walk by its light. The nations. Not the nations which are saved. Just the nations. You see? Again, another attack at Christians. Just amazing. Okay, and in conclusion, I just want to talk to you if you use a NIV. Because you see, I used to use an NIV. I used an NIV for 15 years and I never doubted it. I thought it was God's Word. And then I started to see some of these very serious errors in the NIV. Okay? The NIV is not an updated King James Version. It's a different Bible. It's, it's an Alexandrian Bible. The King James Version is from Antioch. And there's a lot of study that you can do on this subject. But I've just showed you a few of the verse comparisons. There are many hundreds of them that show that the NIV is corrupt. And you can find out more of these on KingJamesVideoMinistries.com. It's my website. Uh, we're going to be adding a lot more videos in the future as the Lord allows. And um, until then, I do pray that you will seriously consider this issue and get a King James Bible and see the difference it makes in your life. Thank you.